Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and uh, today I have brought a very nice problem, it's a pretty challenging problem from Pathfinder, challenge your understanding problem number one from uh, geometrical optics, okay, so uh, let me straight away get into the problem, I'll read out the problem and if you want then you can try it, okay, here's the problem. A cylindrical rod made of some unknown glass is placed on a ruled white paper of common exercise book. If the axis of the rod makes an angle theta with the ruled lines, the lines will appear broken and tilted at some angle as shown in the figure. So this is the experience when uh, you put a glass rod on the notebook, uh, it, the lines appear to be broken like this as shown in this figure. So for part A of the question is explain this appearance of the ruled lines as shown and find the refractive index of the glass assuming rod not to be thick and lines are being observed from a height vertically above the rod. So we are seeing from vertically above the rod and uh, you can imagine some set of parallel rays coming from the uh, uh, from the paper which are being processed through the glass rod. If you want you can give it a try, I will get into my analysis right away. Okay. So the first concept is we need to understand the uh, image formation from cylindrical lenses. You see uh, a cylinder is somewhere between a glass slab and a sphere. Why? Because a glass slab has infinite radius of curvature, right? So this direction also infinite radius of curvature and this direction also infinite radius of curvature if it's a glass slab. Whereas if it's a sphere, then in this direction also there's a finite radius and in this direction also there's a finite uh, radius, right? Whereas when, you, when it comes to cylinder, you see in this direction the radius of curvature is infinity, whereas in this direction it is just like a sphere and it has got a finite radius of curvature, okay? So what happens, uh, let's say uh, a beam of rays or rather you can say a rays are contained in this uh, vertical plane as shown this. So what happens to these rays? So if they are in this vertical plane for this uh, cylindrical lens, all these rays they will be converging on a single point just like a spherical surface. Okay. So with spherical surface also all these rays are supposed to converge to a point. Uh, similarly, the rays coming in this vertical plane, let's say call it plane C, in this plane uh, again these rays will converge to a single point. So the rays from uh, point 1 they converge to this, this point and accordingly if you have both these uh, planes, the rays coming in both these planes, they will be converging to different different points. So rays from plane D will converge at point B and rays from plane uh, C they will converge at point A. So, but uh, what about the rays in horizontal plane? So, for example, ray 1 and ray 4, they are not getting converged. So, you can see that the distance between points A and B is same as the distance between plane C and D. So, that's how the cylinder lens, cylindrical lens works, okay. Uh, so, for planes perpendicular to cylinder's axis, the rays in plane, in the plane converge to uh, a point just like in a spherical lens. So, this is the cylinder's axis and this is the plane perpendicular to cylinder axis and in this plane they get, get converged just like a spherical lens. For rays in planes parallel to the axis of the cylinders, the range, the rays do not converge to a point but maintain their parallel distance somewhat like a glass slab. So that's what I have shown. So the distance between C and D is same as the distance between A and B. So parallel distance is maintained. Same thing is shown here from in the 3D view also you can see. Uh, so B1 and B2 are the rays. Uh, uh, in the, uh, in the upper plane and these rays uh, they are converging to because the axis of the cylinder here is vertical okay so b1 and b2 uh, these these rays are in a plane perpendicular to the cylinder axis and they get converged to point b okay similarly a1 and a2 these are in the lower plane and they converge to point a and this uh, the distance ab is same as the distance between the planes uh, b1 b2 and uh, a1 a2 these two planes vertical distance is same as the vertical distance a b okay so from this we can see that any line parallel to cylinder's axis will not have a magnified image why because uh, uh, if, if there's a line like this this line will maintain the same parallel distance here also okay so it will not have any uh, mag magnification if the line is in a uh, line is parallel to the cylinder's axis whereas if the line is uh, uh, perpendicular to the cylinder's axis, that line will have the magnification just like that of a spherical lens. Okay, so just uh, and a line perpendicular to the cylinder's axis will get magnified just like spherical lenses. Okay, so now coming to the current problem. Okay, so uh, 
so here we have uh, this uh, glass rod and let's say i am imagining the se imagining section ac let's say it has some length dl so this section ac and whose image is being formed like uh, shown here okay dotted line is that means supposed to be the segment that's below the glass rod okay let's say some length dl is there now uh, to visualize the image of uh, ac i am trying to form a rectangle uh, around ac with ac as the diagonal of the rectangle so i am making a uh, making a uh, rectangle a b c d okay so that i can easily locate the points a and c because what happens see when you process this rectangle through this glass rod instead of processing just this uh, diagonal ac you process the entire rectangle imagine that we had drawn a rectangle on the uh, sheet so what happens when you process this rectangle you see the uh, the side ab this is parallel to the cylinder's axis right so side ab's image will have the same size as ab okay it will not be magnified or diminished so ab will have maintain same size whereas uh, ad this will be magnified uh, through the cylinder just like magnification through spherical lenses okay so if this part is clear now our job becomes very easy we can easily find ab and ad image and accordingly we'll be able to locate point c okay now imagine a line segment ac under the glass rod we can imagine it to be the diagonal of rectangle abcd as i said okay if the image of the rectangle were to be formed through the rod to say let us say a dash b dash c dash d dash then a dash b dash should be equal to ab so uh, uh, i've not sh uh, i think i've shown it later on uh, yeah so a dash b dash c dash d dash so this a dash b dash will be same as ab but uh, this a dash d dash this will be uh, magnified according to the uh, the cylinder the uh, spherical lens formula okay so that's what i'm going to do so uh, a dash b dash the image of this is same as the original object and uh, because ab is parallel to the ro uh, rod axis and hence does not get magnified in the image in the image suppose this is dl so this is dl cos theta so dl cos theta remains as it is whereas dl sin theta will be magnified dl sin theta gets magnified now let's work out the magnification uh, for dl sin theta dl sin theta portion means uh, this ad section i am i want the magnification of this one okay so uh, using the refraction formula for spherical surface okay so if if i look at the cross section of the cylinder the rod and there is uh, this dl sin theta which is perpendicular to the uh, axis of the cylinder you see the cylinder axis is going into the page and dl sin theta is perpendicular to the axis okay you can say skew perpendicular so just to uh, show the in perspective we are talking about so this is the cylinder axis and we are talking about this dimension just under the cylinder okay and this i have shown in the side view looking from here where cylinder is appearing to be a circle and this uh, uh, dl sin theta portion is uh, appearing behind the cylinder so that's what this is this view dl sin theta let's say okay and this is our cylindrical rod so now uh, i am using the uh, formula for the cylindrical surfaces refraction at uh, or spherical surfaces so, mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r and this distance is negligible because the rod is just above this dl sin theta so negligible distance so u is almost zero we can say and for such surfaces magnification is given by mu1 v upon mu2 u okay so now uh, what i can do i can multiply this equation one by the factor u upon mu1 throughout so if i multiply this by u upon mu1 what do i get i get mu2 u upon mu1 v minus one is equal to u by r uh, into mu2 by mu1 minus 1 so you can verify just mul multiply this entire equation by u upon mu1 so why why did i do this because i want to know the magnification and this has become now one upon magnification right so one upon magnification minus one but the u is zero so this is zero so that gives me what so one upon m minus one is u by r into this and here u is zero therefore magnification at uh, first refraction must be equal to one so that's my one uh, equation about refraction from the uh, rear end of the rod okay that is the end nearer to the uh, page okay <coughs> or nearer to the notebook okay now also from equation 3 uh, as u tends to 0 v tends to 0 okay so this is the equation uh, equation 3 so when u is 0 v must also be 0 right because uh, uh, if u is 0 rhs is 0 
and this factor must go to 1 right so u is very very small so v also should be very very small then only this factor can be a finite number we want it to be 1 so if u is 0 v should also be nearly 0 okay so that's what i have written okay so as u tends to 0 v tends to 0 there uh, because since only 0 by 0 limit will lead to a finite number otherwise it will the limit will go to 0 itself if the denominator is finite number okay so if v were a finite number it will lead to a minus 1 equal to 0 okay which is obviously false right so if v were a finite number and u were 0 so this will lead to minus 1 equal to 0 which is a wrong equation right so therefore v must also be 0 so now let us apply spherical surface formula at uh, point q so this is the refraction from the rear end now from the front end okay again we'll write the equation so that uh, that equation 4 was 1 upon m minus 1 is u by r into mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 okay so for surface q uh, let's say magnification is m q so 1 upon m q minus 1 becomes now what is the value of u so u is minus 2 r so minus 2 r and radius of curvature is minus r so minus r and mu 2 so this is now medium 2 which is uh, air and uh, this is uh, glass so 1 upon mu minus 1 okay and th this gives us magnification at uh, uh, the front end or the top end of the glass uh, rod as uh, mu upon 2 minus mu you just simplify this and uh, you take mq uh, on, the, on the left side so this is the magnification from the front end okay or the top end so total magnification is the products of two magnifications and since first magnification was one only so you just multiply this this is the total magnification right now uh, so in the image this dimension as i uh, uh, showed you earlier this is as it is dl cos theta and this is magnification times dl sin theta right and the total image you see here the total image is inclined at an angle theta plus alpha with respect to the axis of the cylinder so total image will be this and this if you complete uh, again draw two parallel lines so the diagonal is traced as this uh, the diagonal of the new image so the rectangle goes like this and this is the diagonal okay so a dash c dash is the new diagonal which is inclined at an angle theta plus alpha with the cylinder axis okay so i can say that uh, from this figure if you see i can say that tan of theta plus alpha will be m dl sin theta upon dl cos theta right uh, because this is, uh, you see, uh, this is uh, m dl sin theta and this is dl cos theta and this is tan theta plus alpha, right? So, from this image, we can see uh, this is what, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, this equation I have written based on uh, this image and this image, okay? Okay. Now, uh, using equation 7 in equation 8. So, what is the equation 8? This is equation 8. And what is equation 7? You see, equation 7 is this uh, magnification, right? So, uh, so uh, instead of magnification, I can put mu upon 2 minus mu as I derived earlier. So, tan of theta plus alpha is mu upon 2 minus mu into tan theta, okay? And now you can just rearrange this and solve for mu. So, mu comes out to be 2 tan theta plus alpha upon tan theta plus tan of theta plus alpha, okay? So, that's our final answer. And that was my analysis for this uh, lovely problem. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. And if you enjoyed the analysis, please do sh uh, give it a thumbs up. And please share this video as much as possible with your friends through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord, or whatever medium you use for networking with them. And most importantly, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do new videos for you uh, frequently. And thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.